This looks absolutely amazing. You can't go wrong. I'm saying, I think mac and cheese is the best supplement for fries. That's my goal. Woo. Oh, hey, we on the way to McDonald's. That is nothing to be hype about. We are on the way to McDonald's, man. And we go meet it with Jay. He said he wanted to go. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. So I'm gonna get some food. Uh, not, I'm hungry, but like, Fried food really isn't what I want right now, but you know, I'm vibing with it. It's whatever, not a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I'll probably will get some burgers or something. Burgers and fries will hit right now. So let's get burger uh, or three, probably like three burgers and some fries. And we're gonna be chilling, man. Uh, if you don't have the McDonald's app and you go to McDonald's, you are losing money. Go get the McDonald's app, bro. Like, quite literally, I get a 20 count nut. What's up, a car? Oh, the lights are out. That car looked different from a distance because the lights were out and it's dark. I was like, what the heck? But dude, I got a 20 count nugget, a large, two two medium fries for like five, six dollars, bro. Like, that's a vibe. It's six dollars, but that's a vibe. Wild shit. All who refuse will have their death. This is crazy. Where's Amen? It's not here yet. Bro, I only watched this show for Amen, bro. Last time me and Jay hey, played with these North teams, North. last time me and Jay played with these teams, Jay was destroyed, bro. It's a 20-point yeah, dub. Good about Sasuke, too. Oh, Sasuke is, he's a dog. He's legit. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, I came hey, who's, over. Um, Itachi? <gasps> That's Sasuke's older brother. Okay, I've heard about him, too. Itachi is the best character in Naruto. No question. Y'all, the last game me and Jay played, I literally couldn't do nothing, bro. I had the all-time Blazers versus all-time Bulls. And like quite literally, bro, the game the game was 5862, so it wasn't like a bad, bad game. But like um there's nothing I could do. You know what I'm saying? Like Bill Walton. I had Bill Walton and Lamarcus Aldridge, and they were getting rebounded over by this like Gibson Gilbert Gibson guy, whatever his name is from the Bulls, bro. Like there's no way Bill Walton was getting outclassed like that, bro. Like I've never heard of that guy, bro, outside of the 2K. So I was just like, dang, bro. Um but you know, close game. I ain't gonna be mad about it. One thing I've been getting better with, like with games, like uh, like games online and just in general, bro, is like don't take it too like serious. You know what I'm saying? I, I can take them real serious, bro. Like I'm real competitive. Uh, but I gotta keep myself calm sometimes. Cause I be getting mad, bro. <laughs> I be getting mad at the game. Like why the heck? I be blaming the devs and stuff. Like wh whoever made the game like plotted against me, bro. They did it to me, bro. They, they wanted me to lose. That's what be going on. Cause I be, I'm good, bro. I should not be losing, bro. If I lose, then clearly somebody like set the game up to make me lose, bro. But it's 12 30, 3 in the morning. I gotta get up and uh, gotta get up and go to the gym. I'm going to the field first at six, so I gotta get my butt up. It's gonna be a little damp out there, but thank God we have turf. Uh, but yeah, so get up and get to the field and get that work in, man. Time's running down. Time's running down on um. You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta get healthy and I gotta get what I, I need to get. I, I'm not letting nobody down this year. I'm not letting myself down. We're gonna, we gonna be as good as we need to be and how good we can be, bro. Like, this this year is gonna be a year, you know what I'm saying? These vlogs are gonna go crazy um, and they're gonna they're gonna be what they're, what they're called to be. This person's going quite slow, probably because it, it it's raining a little bit, so I, I'm gonna go slow too. But, um, yeah, bro, I, I want this year to be so good, bro, and I know it can be and will be if I do what it takes, so it's time to lock in, bro. Like, I've been to the, I told my boys, you know, we went hooping a couple of times, but I told I told them, bro, like, I'm not hooping again, bro, because um, I want to stay healthy, and on top of that, bro, I can't go to the gym more than I go to the field. I don't play basketball. I'm a football player. I don't play basketball, so I don't need to be out there at the gym more than I am on the field, bro. I don't play basketball. Um, 
You know what I'm saying? If I get hurt doing that crap, then I'm basically just saying, you know what I'm saying? I don't really care for football. That's what I'm saying, bro. I need I need to lock in, bro, like, and get get right. Football is not my life, though. Understand? That's one thing I also have to understand. Football is not my life, but it's something I can use to glorify God. Um, so we got to do that. Y'all, I don't know what it is, but it is. Dude, these lights are terrible. My lights are so bad, but it's all right. But yeah, man. Hey, the word I got for y'all tonight is, is one heck of a word. So y'all lock in and enjoy it, man. What's up, y'all, man? How y'all doing today? Um, This word right here in Jeremiah, the 39th chapter, is one heck of a word. Um, And it's it's one that if you when you read it, you know what I'm saying? If you just read it like a book, you know what I'm saying? You're going to miss out on the importance behind it. Um, you really just when you, if you really read it and look at it for what it is, and if you connect it from chapter to chapter, you really see what God has been saying in the lesson that He has for us today. Anybody who tells you uh, that for, for any Christian that the Old Testament has no importance for us today, as Christians, you are missing out. Remember, it's the same God, same God. Yes, there's different covenants. Yes, there's a different different testament. It's pre Jesus, but understand, God is still God. And so he spoke to his people in very similar ways. And the messages he had for them then are very similar and same necessity for us now today. Because today I want to talk to you about because you trusted in me. And not, not me. Don't trust in me. Trust in him. Because you trusted in him. But this is what God has said to Abedmelech. If y'all remember him from last chapter, if you haven't seen that yesterday's video, go check it out. Um, also, make sure you go read Jeremiah 38 chapter and 39 chapter for yourselves. But yesterday in Jeremiah 38 chapter... Abedmelech came and saved Jeremiah from the cistern that the, uh, the Ju uh, Judah's officials had thrown him in because King Zedekiah gave them the permission. And then again, remember, King Zedekiah also went. And then whenever Abedmelech came to him and gave him permission to save him. Uh, remember, that, that shows King Zedekiah had no backbone. He was scared of the officials. He, he didn't know what to stand on. Because what? He was scared to stand on God's word in public. But in private, he was willing to agree. That's a heart that we cannot have. But Abedmelech stood up to the officials, regardless of their, their authority, regardless of their status, because he didn't stand by man's authority, but God's. And so he went and saw the wicked thing that was done to Jeremiah, and he stood up. And he stood up for what God had said and went and saved Jeremiah from the cistern. And so today... We're, we're in a time where we basically have about a, a year, a year and a half um, split from the beginning of the chapter um, to the next couple of verses. Because what happens is that um, Babylon begins the siege about, uh, about at the, I guess, the, the ninth year of uh, King Zedekiah's rule in Judah. And by the 11th year, uh, Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar have overtook it by this point. And so we resume in the 11th year of King Zedekiah's rule. And what we see is that there's a complete shift and what has happened, Babylon has overcome and conquered Israel so much that they now were putting their own officials in authority. The, the Babylon's own officials were taking over land and, and, and calling authority and being placed around the middle um, the middle walls of Israel, which is a big deal. The moment that, that your own like Babylon's officials are taking spots, that means they are basically conquering the land, not just by, by having like a presence, but, but not by now having authority over the land. And so what we see, I want y'all to remember this big thing. Jeremiah has been coming before King Zedekiah and King Jehoiakim and all these different kings of Israel. And, and the one message he's been saying is God's message to, to the nation. He, he keeps telling them that one day Babylon is going to come and take over this land and destroy it, leaving desolation. But, what, but his message to him, that is, God has given y'all mercy. And what is his mercy? If you give yourself up, to Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar, you will surely live. But if you fight against King Nebuchadnezzar and stand and rebel, then what? You will die by the sword. And why? You might be saying, again, these are the Israelites. These are God's people. Why in the world would God tell them not to fight back, but give yourself up? I want you to remember, Israel has been living wicked for the last hundreds of years. We're leaving wicked all off and on. We have different kings coming and leading their people to wickedness. King Zedekiah led the people into evil. King Jehoiakim before him led the people into evil. And again, it's not just that they sinned. Yes, we today fall short. But they lived in unrepentance and God sat by holding his wrath, watching. 
And yes, we saw moments where God's wrath would surely show and that a prophet would have to come like through Elijah and Elisha. And these different prophets would have to come before these kings and set them straight like with King Ahab and Jezebel, who we saw God's wrath fall upon. But again, God's wrath had not fallen upon all of Israel yet. Because, um, because God was being merciful and giving them time to repent, but they chose not to. And so God finally had to break them. God finally had to break them to lead them to repentance. And so now we see that God is using Babylon, which is a wicked nation himself, using a Babylon to come and correct his people, to discipline his people. This is why Israel is going to fall to the hands of Babylon. You reap what you sow. They sowed evil in Israel, and now they were reaping that which they had sowed. And so God is pronounced, though, if you come and you just give yourself up to Babylon, you will see mercy. And all the kings are hearing this message. All the officials are seeing this message and they fought hard against Jeremiah, not because Jeremiah had done evil, but because they did not like the word of the Lord. And Jeremiah was doing his job. He was speaking God's word as we will in this world. We are going to go around. We are going to spread God's word. If we are true believers and we're going to have a whole lot of pushback. A lot of people are not going to like what we say. But again, it's not about how people react to the word. Because at the end of the day, God's word must be spoken. Just because people don't like like what you're saying does not mean you change the message. Because again, God's message is God's message. Don't you make it your message. Don't you make it man's message. Keep it God's message. And that's why we saw last chapter that Jeremiah was thrown, thrown into the system by the officials. Because they did not like the word that was coming out of his mouth. But now... After Abedmelech saves him, we see here in, in Jeremiah 39 chapter, the, the reaping what you sow in full, all in full throttle. I mean, it's all full circle here because with the beginning, we, we just see that Babylon is finally taking over Israel and King Zedekiah has to make the decision. Will he give himself up to God, um, to Babylon as God's called him to do and take the discipline? Or will he stand and fight and die as God has called, has called it to be? And I want y'all to, to just hear how spineless King Zedekiah is. He makes his decision to stand and fight. To stand and fight. In fact, what it says is that kings, when King Zedekiah and all the fighting men of Israel, that's what it says. So he had prepared an army. So he himself didn't just stand against, um, stand against Babylon, but he led others to stand in rebellion against God. And so what ends up happening is that he stands against them. But what happened when, when Babylon comes? He's so spineless that he didn't even stand to fight. He's, it says that when he, whenever the, it says whenever kings that Achaia and the, um, the fighting men of Israel saw the um, King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, they ran away. When they, when they saw the Chaldeans, which is another way, word for the Babylonians, they ran away. You know how spineless that is? God had said, if you turn yourself in, if you just give yourself up, there will be mercy and they will let you live. But instead, he chose to stand and fight. Even worse, when it came before him, he ran away. Number one, what that shows above all is that he did not trust God at all. God had told him if he gave himself up, there would be mercy. But he did not trust the Lord. He didn't trust the Lord so much. That he stood and fought, expecting to overcome. And then when he saw them, he was so scared and still didn't trust God's word. Because again, in that moment when he saw them, even though he chose to stand and fight, he could have easily said right then and there, we are giving ourselves up. But instead, he was so scared of what might happen to him if they lost or if they gave them something that he ran away. He did not trust God's word. How are we as believers going to act when things come our face, when life starts to hit? Are we going to give ourselves up to God? Are we going to trust him in his word? Or when, when things start hitting the walls and we get scared, are we going to start reacting in ways that don't show faith? We must show faith at all times. It is easy, really easy to get scared and to, and to make decisions that are contrary to faith. But at the end of the day, we do not move on feelings. We do not look move off of what things look like, but what things are. And at the end of the day, when God has spoken a word into your life, you act on what he has said and not on what things are looking like, what the world tells you to, to, to do. Because Zedekiah, is, I'm sure all his emotions, all, all his fears got to him. And he said, man, because again, he, just in the last chapter, he told Jeremiah when Jeremiah told him, he said, Jeremiah told him what? Obey the Lord. And why did Jeremiah tell him this? Because what Zedekiah had expressed to Jeremiah was the, the fear of the, um, whenever he went to Babylon, being placed in the hands of, of Nebuchadnezzar and him giving him up to the Judeans and them killing him. 
um, once they got him in their hands for leading them to this place. But Jeremiah assured him that if he gave himself up, he would have nothing to worry about. And Jeremiah went on to say, obey the Lord. We see a chapter later that this word that was spoken to him meant nothing, meant nothing to him because he did not listen. And now we're seeing what disobedience brings to, because what it says is that when he ran away, it doesn't just end with him running away. He runs away. And what ends up happening is that they overcome him. The Chaldeans catch him. And what they end up doing is that they take him, they blind him, they shackle him. And they take him to Babylon to face Nebuchadnezzar and be judged. But before they blind him and take him away, guess what they do? Before his own eyes, they kill his sons. And they go on to kill all the officials of Judah. Just as the Lord said, just as the Lord said, this is what happens when we disobey the Lord. Disobedience never is ever rewarded. How can you expect mercy when you deny it? God offered mercy for obedience. Zedekiah stood in rebellion and did not trust the Lord. He didn't trust him so much that he didn't, he didn't give himself up. He, he stood and fought and his fear even led him to run away. He was spineless and did not trust the Lord. But that's just one story in Jeremiah the 39th chapter. And that tells exactly what not to do. But here's the story of what to do as believers in Christ. We see now Jeremiah, the prophet, who has been standing by the Lord. I mean, standing by him, strong and heavy. All of Jeremiah, we're 39 chapters in, and Jeremiah is still preaching the word of God and, 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 and giving the word whenever the Lord speaks to him. He is obeying as we're called to. Last chapter, we get a, we get a new person that we've not met before, Abed-Melech. And, and he comes in and he comes in and does this righteous act because he, he denies the wicked of the world and denies the wicked of the officials and stands by God. And we see this act as an act telling us as Christians to stand up against evil, stand up against wickedness and proclaim God's word. And it's a great message. And now we see that that does not go without reward because here we're about a year later. From that last chapter, where we're now in the time where Zedekiah is being captured and his kids are being killed, the officials are being killed, he's being taken to Babylon. There's a complete different story going on for Jeremiah and Abed Melech. And we see here when we resume with Jeremiah that Jeremiah is still in the same place when Babylon comes. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar himself, before they even reach Jeremiah, sends a word to his to, to his his staff and his officials and his his guards, his generals, and tells them to watch over Jeremiah and whatever Jeremiah asks for, make sure he has. That that I think that is the epitome of God. God will prepare a place for you, uh, or a seat for you at the table of your enemies. If you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, there is no way you can receive it. You must have faith because Jeremiah. Stayed there in the midst of the enemy, sieging his land. I'm sure he was scared as could be. But he stood not because of what the world showed him, like Zedekiah. He didn't run away. He didn't stand and fight. But he, he gave himself up and he stood and, he, he, stood and he, he rested on God's word. Because he trusted what God had said. And, and he was rewarded for what he had done. But while he's there, the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah and says what to him? It tells him to go to a bed Malek. And tell him that there is nothing to worry about. Tell him that God has him. Tell him that there will be that there that he has a place and that he will live. And why does God say this to Abed Malek? We just saw last chapter his obedience. God's exact words said, Because you trusted in me, because you trusted in me, Abed Malek, you will live. Even though your enemies because, because, and here's what God, God acknowledged this to Abedmelech. He said, he's, these people who were coming against him, he said, these people that make you dread Abedmelech, dread means basically fear, um, is scared, dread, dread can be people that, that, that bring you sorrow, bring you pain. He says, these people that you dread Abedmelech, because you trusted in me, you will live and you will live without worry. God said he was going to take care of them. And I think with this major word, it shows two different sides of faith. Those who take faith and stand by the Lord are rewarded. But those who don't trust in the Lord will not see his reward. Then you reap what you sow. And when you walk in disobedience, and disobedience is a sin, we know that. 
And so we see Zedekiah rewarded for what he had sowed. His reward was not one of good. You ever know? Y'all know about Santa, when we, people used to talk about Santa Claus and you getting cold? That's basically what he got. For his wrong behavior, he was given a terrible reward. He reaped what he sowed. But Jeremiah and Abedmelech, two men of God, were rewarded. And the words that God said were because you trusted in me. So all I can say to you all today is because you trust in the Lord, you will be rewarded. I can't tell you with what. I can't tell you how. But I want you to understand that in our lives today, our God is the same always has been and always will be. And if he rewarded his people then for faith and for, for, for trust in him, he will reward us today. And so if they had faith then, we need to have faith now because our God is working. And though we don't know how he's going to work, we don't know when he's going to work, we must have faith and trust that he is going to do what he says he will do. I know you don't see it yet. Y'all, it was a year Babylon was sieging Israel for a year. I'm sure they had no idea what the outcome was going to be for them. But when Nebuchadnezzar took over, Nebuchadnezzar came and said, take care of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah got a word from the Lord and said, you will be taking care of Abedmelech. And God said to Jeremiah to tell Abedmelech, you will be taken care of because you trusted in me. So trust the Lord today forever and always. I know it's not easy. Again, it didn't say that Abedmelech didn't fear. In fact, it said Abedmelech dreaded the Chaldeans. He was scared. But he held to faith, not because of what he saw, but because he knew who he had faith in. Let us pray. Dear Holy Father, we say thank you for the love that you give us and the fact that you are God forever and always. We give you the glory and the praise that we can have trust in you, Lord God, even when we can't trust ourselves, even when we can't trust men, even when we can't trust our situation. We can trust you and what you can and will do. So, God, we give you the glory for being who you are. We thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to, to get into this word, Lord God, and to learn and have knowledge. I thank you that you're the same God then as you are now. And I give you the glory because, Lord God, I know you can work and you will work and you do work. And so we, as long as we hold to faith, Lord God, there is nothing to fear. We give you the glory, Lord God. We give you the honor and the praise. And we will not disrespect you, Lord God, by, by being disobedient and so disobedient, Lord God, that we neglect your very word, Lord God, and the truth that is held in it. If you said it, Lord God, then it is done. And we, Lord God, shall stand by that in faith, Lord God, knowing that you are a good God and one that stands by what he says. Because we trust in you, Lord God, there is nothing to fear. Because we trust in you, Lord God, we will overcome. Because we trust in you, Lord God, you have left even if the world does not. Even when the world has bad desires toward us, Lord God, because we trust in you, you will prepare a place for us at our enemy's table. Because, Lord God, you have us. What the devil has called bad and evil in our life, Lord God, you said you would turn it around for our good. And so we say thank you. We trust you, Lord God, and we rely on you. And we proclaim, we proclaim victory every day because we trust in you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Because we trust in him, we can speak with authority, victory, day in and day out over all our situations and any and everything we are dealing with because we trust in him. So give God glory today, forever, and always. Because we trust in him, we will make it. We will be where we are called to be because we trust in him. That's nice. Round up, man. But if y'all enjoy this vlog, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I pray you enjoy that vibe, man. Okay. He trusted. No limit. Young and winning, most straight out of state ain't coming back. They call me Alex at the crib, but they be on the track. My homie Dorsey saying that it's me, but he the Mac. The shorty call me Chester, she a 